Welcome back to the channel. I've uh, been offline for a little bit, uh, kind of busy doing some other things, and I had a really bad sinus cold, so uh, I'm still trying to get over that, but we're back in the shop, and today we're going to be doing uh, some work on the piston for the 8-horse mogul. Uh, specifically, we're going to be doing ring grooves, so let's get going. Well, as you can see, uh, this is the piston half that uh, was left over from the castings. Uh, it's got these ring grooves here. Um, we're going to be machining those in the uh, piston uh, that we're going to put in the engine. So um, um, the rough casting, here's a rough casting, uh, if you remember what that looks like. and. Um, we have done several operations on the other casting, but uh, we're going to come in here and measure out grooves. And I drew up a little uh, drawing that shows uh, my rough dimensions and um, uh, just kind of the layout of the, the piston so that uh, um, I don't get off track when I'm machining. Back at the lathe here, bird's eye view. Uh, first of all, apologize for my voice. I'm getting over a uh, pretty bad uh, respiratory infection. So, um, pretty raspy today, so I apologize for that. Uh, I am getting better, but it's kind of slow. So anyway, uh, uh, just a different camera view here. It's kind of hard to uh, uh, film some of this stuff with the positioning of this lathe, but uh, we'll try and see how this view works. Uh, you can see I've been doing some test cuts here. I've had a terrible time with the uh, uh, tool I was using, uh, the carbide tool. Uh, there I'm just measuring in for uh, dimension uh, for the uh, ring groove I'm going to start cutting. Um, uh, these positioning of these rings isn't real critical. Um, just want to try to get it kind of close. So, But uh, anyway, uh, I had a lot of tool chatter and that uh, caused me quite a bit of uh, work. Um, I ended up making a tool out uh, of high-speed steel that was much more rigid, uh, locking the carriage down here so I go in straight. Uh, I don't want any taper in the, the side of this groove for the ring to uh, bind up against. So the, the method here is just to uh, come in, um, plunge in to a depth, and then move over and I'm just going to make a rough uh, groove here that's about 30 thousandths undersized. Uh, I'm shooting for uh, about 376 thousandths. Uh, that'll give me 1 thousandths clearance on the uh, 375 thousandths ring. Um, so I'm just going to take a groove uh, cut here and then uh, uh, start uh, moving the carriage over until I get that uh, 345 or 340 dimension and then uh, dial it in after that by the by using the ring. I'm going to use the ring until it just drops in and uh, call that good. But uh, you got to have a pretty steady hand here on the feed. Um, uh, my spindle speed is uh, 290. Uh, that seemed to work pretty well. Um, so I plunged in there. I'm going to back out and then uh, um, loosen the carriage up here. Uh, and then the uh, dial indicator there on the side, I'm going to zero it, and that is for the travel of the, the carriage here. I'm going to move the carriage over and uh, take another plunge cut here. Just moving the carriage over here a little bit, uh, just making a rough cut here. Uh, like I said, uh, just getting a rough dimension, about 30 thousandths under on the uh, ring groove. Uh, not real precise at this point. Uh, we'll be getting precise here in a little bit, but uh, I'm going to plunge in here. Um, this uh, grooving tool uh, is a real rigid, uh, short parting tool is what it looks like. Um, really good for this type of plunge cutting and, and cutting grooves and uh, o-ring grooves stuff like that as well but uh, it, it does take quite a bit of tool pressure and uh, just some uh, fine touch on it or it will grab or chatter and uh, really cause a lot of problems so I'm just going to do a rough me measure here uh, it looks pretty good uh, it's about 340 so I think that's what we'll go with
Here we are, a little different view uh, from the end of the lathe. I'm doing a uh, final cut there. Uh, move the carriage back along the bottom of that groove. It'll true it up uh, with the two different plunge cuts. I'm just checking my depth. This depth isn't real critical. It just needs to be more than the uh, ring uh, thickness uh, by a few thousandths. Um, uh, it's not very critical. It's you just want some clearance there for expansion of the piston and everything and to make sure that the ring itself is uh, able to go below the face of the uh, piston skirt there uh, should be enough clearance so not not a real critical dimension there um, just uh, truing that up here and um, and then I'll get a final dimension on that and then uh, move on to uh, making the final width for the ring so that looks pretty good uh, I think we'll go with that it's about uh, ten thousandths under well now the precision starts uh, just making a uh, little one thousandths passes here to dial in this width uh, it's getting really close won't quite go in there uh, I was gonna do a quick measurement here and uh, yeah, we're right at the 375 mark, and uh, the depth is uh, still good. I always just double check everything as I'm going, so I don't miss it before I tear the uh, the uh, setup down. Uh, so we're going to move the carriage over here, uh, real careful about uh, one thousandths, uh, just taking thousandths inch uh, paths off of the uh, edge of the uh, groove, increasing its width uh, just. Uh, by that one thousandths at a time until that ring just drops in there so uh, that's kind of the process uh, it's real slow and tedious but uh, uh, I'm not a machinist by trade so I go slow and uh, I sure haven't figured out how to put metal back on after you take it off so uh, um, you're just gonna see here uh, should take one thousandths that gauge dial that's on that carriage is really nice for this it's real precise uh, it's real easy to move over just one thousandths and take a, a shave pass and there it, it dropped in that time so uh, I think we're just gonna go with that and decided to move the carriage over a little bit more uh, maybe another half thousandths here just to get a little better uh, um, uh, clearance on that uh, um, ring groove there but uh, so we'll make another pass here and then uh, we'll call it good well here we are back in the shop um, got the machining done that went pretty well uh, I'm pretty pleased with the finish I had a lot of chatter uh, like I said um, from that tool but uh, uh, it seems to turn out uh, okay. Uh, here's a ring. Um, there's five rings on this piston. They're cast iron. And I purchased these for, I think they were about $14 a piece. Um, they are dimensionally correct um, for this engine. And uh, I just used one of them as a gauge for machining my width on the grooves. Uh, I wanted about a thousandths, thousandths and a half clearance. That's uh, enough for expansion. And then if you get much more than that, uh, you'll actually hear the rings slapping in the grooves as the engine's running. So we don't want that. So um, got a really good fit here on all these rings. Uh, I'm really pleased with that. And um, so the next operation will be to machine this wrist pin hole here um, we'll get set up and do that on a Bridgeport mill and uh, that'll be quite an operation so uh, it's going to take me a little bit to figure out uh, how I'm going to do that but uh, anyway uh, I've got the ring grooves done one step closer to having a machined piston um, I got some uh, parts back from a welder guy that I have weld for me building up some parts for this engine so uh, we're going to be doing some machining on that uh, here shortly probably some grinding uh, rough grinding and then some uh, finished machining in the lathe so uh, stay tuned for that and uh, as always uh, like and subscribe if you like what we're doing here and thanks for watching